This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Hindu. Minister orders a crackdown on land mafia, asks IAS and IPS officers to be vigilant. Even as Vedanta is sent packing from Risa, government turns a blind eye to zip code SEZ in Tamil Nadu. NDTV Hindu takes an exclusive look. State and the uh, state government across country become a real estate brokers. Political parties urge the election commission not to take a hasty decision on the TN upper house. DMK and Congress remain adamant. Civil Aviation Watchdog DGCS says the jet flight incident shows serious procedural lapses. The crew has been suspended. Home Minister P. Chidambaram inaugurates the Loyola World Alumni Congress. Says education institutions should not be money spinning enterprises. But surely we cannot allow education institutions to become simply money making or money spinning businesses. BCCI likely to press criminal charges against Lalit Modi next week in Chennai. And India looks to be on shaky ground after losing four wickets in their chase. Welcome to the show. You're watching News Tonight with me, Ashmit Kumar. Let's take a look at what else is making news in the country. Government sources tell NDTV Pakistan now says they will not take flood aid directly from India. It will have to be routed through the United Nations. After Vedanta, it's POSCO now, central team at the proposed site to inspect POSCO steel plant in Odisha. Food alerts sounded in Karnataka over persistent rains. At least 10 people have been killed. Tiger Cub found drugged and hidden among stuffed toys in the suitcase of a woman at the Bangkok International Airport. And let's go! That's the call by Rehman to all Indians ahead of the Commonwealth Games. Now, except the DMK and the Congress, all political parties in the state have urged the Election Commission not to take a hasty decision in setting up the upper house of the Tamil Nadu. The Chief Electoral Officer Praveen Kumar today convened an all-party meeting to discuss the delimitation process for upper house in Tamil Nadu. The meeting was attended by nine political parties including the DMK and the main opposition AIA DMK. Emerging out of the three-hour-long meeting, political party leaders said that they discussed the modalities and other issues regarding the upper house and voiced their opinion. Setting up an upper house has been a dream project of Chief Minister Karnanadhi and the DMK patriarch wants the election for an upper house ahead of the 2011 assembly polls. But other political parties in the state are not in favour of holding an election before the 2011 state assembly elections. Marxist Communist Party in Sarbil, Tamil Nadu Satta Melavi Theatre and Arathagara Bode, Avasara Pade, Togo the Gare Marusira in Pesavilayum. Wakalai Tirmani Padreyum, or Avasara Adrid and Adavadi Kerr Save in Molum, Morega Adam Guru Tavada Kuda and Badinaga Varpur Tirkara. Verumban Miyada Kachigal, Idai, Avasaram Katamal, Alo Sitte in the Budiva Edika went up in the Sonargal, Dravada Muneta Karakam, Udanadiaga, Ida Mudiva went up in the Sonargal. The communist Kachik Sarvile, Avasaram Avasaram Ahe. In the Mela Viter, the late Narata Puda, the end of the Sutika Tirgro, where Karan and Lakata, the rain in the Terra de Narata Puda. Now that's a clear indication how the opposition parties do not want to rush in for an upper house. But now let's listen to what DMK's Elangavan had to say on the need for an upper house. Katamandra till Nerevetra Pata and the Urumanada and the Nerevetra Pata Tirmana till the sailboard of Puruka, Ter the Lana Emum, bring the sailboard of Indomena Karate. And for more on this, now we are joined by our reporter Shabir Ahmed. Shabir, why is it that the opposition parties are wary of an upper house in the Tamil Nadu Assembly? Assembly? Uh, 
right. Uh, Shabir, uh, uh, the, he, will, he will be joining us uh, shortly and will tell us more about why there's a conflict of interests here. Now the, uh, now the incumbents have asked for elections to be held. Perhaps that could be one reason. And to expand more on that, uh, we are now joined by Shabir Ahmed. Uh, Shabir, why again uh, are the opposition parties wary of such a upper house in the, in the Tamil uh, Assembly? Well, uh, Schmidt, uh, it is quite clear that the opposition parties are not ready to accept uh, uh, the formation of uh, uh, an upper house for Tamil Nadu. In fact, the IADMK had already made it very clear that it is unnecessary for an upper house in Tamil Nadu. And as, as well as uh, its alliance parties like the MDMK, the CPI and the CPM have made it clear that they are not in support of uh, uh, an upper house in Tamil Nadu. But uh, then the Congress and uh, the DMK wanted an upper house in Tamil Nadu just ahead of the uh, assembly elections because it is a revival after uh, more than 20 years uh, in the state. And uh, uh, the opposition parties feel that uh, uh, if uh, an upper house is being revived ahead of the elections, then definitely that will give a political mileage uh, for uh, uh, the ruling DMK and Chief Minister M. Karnanidhi will be the ultimate beneficiary. And today, uh, at the meeting which was convened by the Chief Electoral Officer Naresh uh, and, uh, Praveen Kumar and also other uh, officers uh, from Delhi, it was quite clear the opposition parties voiced their concern and they wanted uh, the election commission not to take any hasty decision on setting up of an upper, upper house in the state. Uh, in fact, uh, they wanted to um, uh, follow all the procedures and to be very cautious and careful and to work out all the modalities of forming, of uh, say, reviving the upper house so that it will avoid any kind of confusion in the future. So that is what uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the opposition parties want at this point in time. And also they made it very clear that... Uh, uh, any process of uh, we should not be in a hasty man and in fact uh, uh, the upper house has to be revived either after the elections or to follow all the procedures because this is something which is new coming in force uh, after a very long time and they wanted to take no chances and they are also very careful about uh, uh, the beneficiaries of uh, this entire uh, issue. In fact, they don't want to, uh, any kind of political mileage to be gained out uh, for Karnanidhi. All right, Shabir, thank you so much for those inputs and insight on uh, what this could mean for the stakeholders in the upcoming 2011 Assembly elections. And uh, moving on now, the crackdown on land mafia. That's the latest order from the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister for the Police Department in the state. Speaking on the second day of the IAS and the IPS Officers Conference, Karnandhi said that for the past four years, the law and order performance in the state has been good. He urged officers to protect the rights of the poor and the downtrodden. The Chief Minister also addressed issues like land grabbing, sand mafia and smuggling of PDS rice from state and asked police officers to take strict action against those found to be involved. Now, even as the Chief Minister spoke about the crackdown on land mafia, opposition AIA DMK today protested against the ruling DMK. The protesters alleged that the Chief Minister M. Karnadi had encroached land that belonged to the Chennai Corporation. Amma said that the Gopalapuram was forcefully occupied by the DMK Chief M. Karnanadi. The AIA DMK Chief alleged that the land was unsurped when Karnanadi was the PWD Minister in 1967. She pointed out that she initiated action to retrieve the land when she was the Chief Minister. She also accused that the open space reserve meant for the Chennai Corporation was also under forceful occupation for parking vehicles of DMK party workers. The opposition leader also accused the ruling DMK leadership of going back on its word to hand over the OSR to the Chennai Corporation at Anna Arivalayam. Jalalta also accused Karnanadi's family and other DMK ministers of being involved in several land grab cases. Karnanadi, Manarachi Kisundamana Nelate, our Abagarite, 
தன்னுடைய சொந்த பயன்பாட்டிற்காக வைத்திருக்கின்றார் அறிவாலயத்தில் எட்டு புள்ளி நாற்பத்தி ஏழு கிரவுண்டு நிலம் மக்கள் பயன்பாட்டிற்கு பூங்காவாக பயன்படுத்த முடியாத ஒரு சூழ்நிலை ஏற்பட்டிருக்கின்றது Now, in, in staying with the land grabbing cases, Chief Minister Karnadi has warned against land grabbing. But when it comes, but it comes at a time when his own government faces criticism over plans for a controversial special economic zone, which could affect the entire village of Teravai in Thuruvar district. Our reporter Sai Manish has the details on the latest developments in the village. This letter sent by the Environment Ministry to Sipcot is a green signal for the controversial SEZ in Teravai village. Now Sipcot will have to file a reply within 30 days but what's shocking is that the environment ministry is satisfied with Sipcot's analysis but the environment ministry did not allow the global mining major Vedanta Resources to mine bauxite in Orissa's Nyamgiri hills however the very grounds for that holds true for Tervai as well compare this the environment ministry rejected Vedanta's license after it went ahead with construction even before getting an environmental clearance in Tervai too Sipcot has started felling trees. Even an MOU has been signed with Global Tire Major Michelin and other companies. Vedanta ignored reserve forests within a 10 km radius. NDTV Hindu had exposed how the Nemalur Forest Reserve lies right next to the proposed SEZ in Tervai. Vedanta is accused of pressurizing local panchayats. NDTV Hindu had shown you how the signatures of villagers were fudged without even a Gram Sabha hearing. indian state and uh, uh, state government across country become a real estate brokers instead of they do a service for the people citizenship respecting the citizenship they become a real estate broker for multinational companies and the capitalist but what distinguishes orissa from tervai is the politics at play the upa government in a bid to consolidate its votes in a rival bastion considers the vedanta case its master stroke evidence of which was rahul gandhi's recent visit to nyamgiri after cancellation of vedanta's mining license jo madad se kar saka maine ki magar ye jeet hai aapki jeet hai adivasiyon ki jeet hai yahan adivasiyon ki gareeb janta ki awaaz kuch nahi ja rahi thi unki awaaz delhi ki sarkar ne sun li but tamil nadu is a different ball game altogether The Congress-led UPA government in the center will think twice before going against the wishes of its formidable ally, the DMK, at the center. Now that means that even though the Sipcot SEZ in Tervo is violating laws with the same impunity as Vedanta did in Odisha, the Environment Ministry under Jairam Ramesh will have to submit to the compulsions of alliance politics. It's a clear case of double standards. The bottom line is, vote bank politics has superseded people's interest and even the laws of the land. With Simonish this is Ashmit Kumar for NDTV Hindu. Now a four member central panel is on a two day visit to Orissa to probe if any forest laws have been violated at the proposed site for Posco steel plant near Paradeep port. This is the second central panel after Ashish Kothari committee to have visited the area. The earlier panel reported that the rights of the tribals in the area had been ignored. The new panel will complete its study today and submit a report to the environment ministry next week. The Prime Minister has also assured Chief Minister Naveen Patnaik that he too will look into the matter. Now, in other developments, the civil aviation watchdog DGCA has said that jet flight incident last night shows serious procedural lapses. 14 people were injured in the evacuation process. A DGCA statement says emergency and evacuation procedures were not followed. The pilot and other crew members have been suspended. Inspection has revealed that there was no fire or smoke in the engine area even though the crew had claimed they could see smoke. The DGCA has also called for a meeting of the heads of training of all airlines to review training of procedures and cabin of off cabin and flight crew particularly in emergency and evacuation procedures. Now 14 pass 14 passengers of this jet flight were injured at the Mumbai airport during the emergency evacuation last night. Flight 9W2302 was taxiing when the fire alarm went off in the cockpit indicating a fire in the left engine. The pilot alerted the ATC and a full emergency was declared. 153 panic-stricken passengers were deplaned using the chutes. Fire engines rushed out to the spot but reported no visible fire. While sliding out some passengers were injured and sustained fractures. 
Most of them were given first aid, but 10 of them were taken to local hospitals. After several hours, the passengers were put on the same flight to Chennai, where the flight arrived a little late at 2 a.m. Now, moving on to cricketing controversy, the BCCI is all set to press criminal charges against Modi and sources say it's likely to happen soon, as, so as soon as next week in Chennai. The BCCI will use Modi's receipt of $80 million facilitation fee from WSG or World Sport Group as the grounds to press charges. Meanwhile, BCCI President Shashank Manohar has denied all allegations of Lalit Modi that the IPL auctions were fixed. Shashank Manohar said that Modi's accusations against Srinivasan, who owns Chennai Super League team, were blatant lies. Two days ago, Srinivasan had rubbish reports that he tried to fix the players' auction and insisted that he won the bid for England all-rounder Andrew Flint off fair and square. I can show you the document which would clearly demonstrate that what Lalit Modi has said is a total lie. Sir, was the same video being played out before the working committee members? Yes, it was played before the working committee members. And they repeated those unanimous. Correct, correct. Right. Thank you. Coming back to developments in the city, Home Minister P. Chidambaram inaugurated the Loyola World Alumni Congress this morning. 73 personalities from various fields, all of them the alumni of Loyola, are being honoured at the event. In his address, the Home Minister said that education institutions should not have the goal of making money, but must impart values of secularism and tolerance. He also stated that regulation of education was required. We recognise the role of the private sector as an education provider. Many great universities were founded by the private sector and are continued to be nurtured by the private sector. But no one can run an institution which loses money every year because then the gap has to be filled from some source. In my view, education cannot become a money-spinning or a money-making enterprise. Therefore, we are attempting to regulate education. At the same time, we should not over-regulate it. Over-regulation will mean initiatives will be killed. We must ensure that institutions impart quality education as well as impart the right values. And believe me, friends, in India today, the most important value that has to be inculcated in everyone is the value of secularism and tolerance. Now, a few proud alumnus of Loyola College recalled old memories from their varsity days. I think we had wonderful teachers like uh, Father uh, Coyle, uh, Chid as Chidambaram said. Yeah, I think he, he was a wonderful teacher, an Irishman, Father Lawrence Sundaram. We had many moments of, I think we were fairly s serious students here, but uh, it was a one, I think they got the balance right. It was a bit, bit more uh, stern than it is today. And uh, the discipline was emphasized and so on. But I think we had a, we had a great time. For the lesson is that you can pursue quality and also be just and make this available. That, I think, was clear from the start. The kind of people we had in class, it was not some elite institution, although it was aiming for the best. I think that, that attempt, you can never bridge that gap, but uh, you could try. And I think that's the lesson you learn, that it's no use spreading mediocrity, but it's no use uh, being excellent either if, you, if you're if elitist. And if you op don't open your doors wide. That's a lesson, I think, uh, we really took from this college and, yeah, from this college. Now the years after retirement can either be those of golden years of beauty and relaxation or those of struggle and hardships. It often boils down to how you manage your finances. NDTV Hindu looks at a few options that could support a comfortable and a respectful life post-retirement. Do I have my finances in order? Will I be able to lead the same lifestyle? What do I do with my gratuity funds? These are questions that often bear down on retired people. And it is to these questions that this 73-year-old man found the right answers. Whether you get the money or not, the eh, expenses is same. Your car, if you maintain, petrol you have to put, driver you have to maintain, this thing, all the things will not go. But that has to be done only much earlier. You have to think about it prior to your retirement. Experts say that financial planning is critical with investment in pension funds being a must. They also advise retirees to stay away from any risky bets while investing smartly in safe financial instruments. So probably now they can park few and some bonds, probably good bonds, consult some financial consultant, they will definitely guide them. And a few and definitely FD. I think FD probably another six months or one year, they might give some 10%. 10%. Mm -hmm. Or if not in markets, they can very well look in for 
investing FDs in companies. Retirees can also look towards investing in insurance schemes due to possible health concerns. I also invest a lot of money on my insurances. My wife, myself, everything, because we are already crossed at 60. So, the uh, latter who will uh, take care of you when something has happened. So, insurance only will cover. Gold is another lucrative bet which most Indians have a fetish for. But some experts warn that as a commodity, even gold can swing both ways depending on demand and supply pressures. At the end of the day, the message for us is loud and clear. Grow money-wise well before you decide to hang your boots. In Chennai, this is Ashmit Kumar for NDTV Hindu. Now we're heading into a small break, but on the other side, the airport security at Bangkok International Airport was in for a surprise as the cat was out of the bag, quite literally. And AR Rahman once again spins out a magical number, this time for the Commonwealth Games. That's up on the other side.